Aloha and welcome to the monthly public presentation of the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii. Since 1990, the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii has been following our mission of promoting human health, animal rights, and protection of the environment by means of vegetarian education as we've grown to become one of the largest all-volunteer, nonprofit vegetarian societies in the nation. It is now time to introduce our special guest. We are very happy to have with us tonight, Mickey Purnell, MD. Hi. Thank you. So Mickey Purnell, MD, is a physician, a speaker, and a jazz singer. She is board certified with the American Board of Family Medicine and the American Board of Integrative Holistic Medicine. She graduated from Okayama uh, University Medical School, Japan, and completed the University of Hawaii's Family Practice Residency Program. As she worked in primary care settings, she became interested in integrative medicine and became certified with the American Board of Integrative Holistic Medicine. She believes that a healthy diet is the foundation of our health and especially that a plant-based diet helps to prevent many chronic diseases and works to provide people with reliable information and ideas to live a healthy life while enjoying delicious natural food. Her presentation tonight is entitled Daily Dose of Natural Medicine. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Mickey Purnell. Thank you very much. Aloha. My name is Miki Purnell, and today we're going to have fun talking about how delicious plant-based food become medicine in the setting of chronic illness, including chronic pain. So let's take a look at the statistics. The pain in itself is a very, very um, uh, prevalent condition. So when we look at the numbers of sufferers, 76.2 million people are suffering from some kind of pain. And when we compare with diabetes, 20.8 million, heart attack, coronary heart disease, 18.7 million, and cancer is 1.4 million. So basically, the chronic pain is a big burden for everybody. And what kind of impact it has to the quality of life, basically, almost two-thirds of the people suffering from pain reported an impact on their overall enjoyment of life. So when the life is not fun, it becomes very, very hard to live, okay? More than three-quarters of the patients are reported feeling depressed. And 70% said that they have trouble concentrating, and 74% said their energy level is is bad. And 86% reported that they cannot fall asleep. Sleep is medicine. And if the sleep is not happening, you cannot re rejuvenate and regenerate. You cannot restore yourself. OK? And uh, I'm going to explain to you how the pain progresses. So people suffering from chronic pain, in the beginning, the pain was new pain. It started with overuse or injury, and you sustain tissue damage or inflammation or possibly nerve damage. And it, created, it creates acute pain, but acute pain can linger even after expected tissue recovery uh, period of usually three months then what's going on in the body is no longer focal mechanical issue. So the nerve function and anatomical changes happen throughout the nerve system, including your brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nerve. And your DNA changes. Your DNA switch turns on to produce more pain substance. For example, substance P, so DNA produces substance P is upregulated. Upregulated is a kind of the, a big word that just means the DNA switch is on. And uh, finally, your nerve system became so angry to the level that they cannot 
shut down. Then the pain goes on and on and on. So the examples of the body changes are nerve damages on the left, DNA alteration in the middle, and also when you look at the tissues of arthritis, when we talk about degenerative changes, that's a medical term for just a age-related wear and tear. It happens in the spinal disc, then we call it degenerative disc disease. Healthy discs are usually well hydrated. There shouldn't be much blood vessels or nerve migrating in there, but aging process, age-related degenerative changes start, and nerve and blood vessels start migrating in the disc, and it causes more flare-up of the aches and pain, and they fuels further progressive degenerative changes. So the new blood vessel formation are the tissue changes in the setting of the arthritis. Okay. And um, so what makes acute pain to become chronic pain? There are no risk factor. For example, obesity, unhealthy diet, nutrition deficiency, depression, anxiety. So yeah, it's natural when your pain is not going away, then people begin to worry that what's going on in the body and this, you know, unhappy feeling is this pain is going to go for a long time and, you know, doctor said that, yeah, the x-ray MRI is negative and why I'm still having the pain and those worrying it actually adds emotional toxin load, and it fuels more aches and pain and stress levels, okay? And uh, lack of sleep and unhealthy relationship. So some people could be dealing with bitter divorce. Then, you know, even their diet is good, their um, exercise is good, but it doesn't work. Um, and overactivity, that means pushing too much through the pain. And also, because of the pain, they're just scared to, scared to do anything, and they're just too much sedentary. And then if they don't move, our motion is lotion, and you kind of locks up, and then you lose the uh, range of motion. And also, nicotine use, like smoking, yeah, and alcohol, and certain medications actually impede with, with our natural physiologic changes. Okay, let's take a look at nerves. There are two types of nerve cells. The first type is neurons. Neurons are the ones that shown in yellow. So neurons has the cell part and they have axon, the stem part, yeah? And it connects to the next neuron with the synapses. And at the synapses, the chemical called neurotransmitter get released and that's how the signal get delivered to the next neurons. And the other type of the cell is called glia cells. What are glia cells? Glias are the cells that stays around the neurons, give nutrients and oxygen to the neurons, and support neurons. When your body's blood inflammation causing chemical level goes up, your nerve system sends that information and activate glia. And when the glia get activated, what happens is activated glia irritate, 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 irritate the neurons. Then irritated neuron irritate already irritated glia cells. And what is this? This is just never ending vicious cycle. So we want to stop that, okay? I think, the, okay. And um, so we know now the risk factors and let's take a look at the protective factors. So what are protective factors? Yeah, optimal body mass index, especially around the trunk area. You don't want to have excess fat around there. When you shower and you take off clothes, you stand in front of the mirror and jump and anything swinging, you want it to work to eliminate it. <laughs> okay, and uh, healthy eating habit, okay, positive emotion. 
yeah, when you're dealing with a pain flare-up, you should just think, yeah, the flare-up will pass, and you just be a detective and ask yourself four questions. Okay, how was my sleep the night before? Okay, did I get off my diet, eat something sugarly or the flowery or the something that my body cannot handle? And then uh, also, how was my emotion? Did I have a bad day? Did I get bad news? And did I push too much? Activity was too much or too little? Then you can kind of start understanding how your body responds to the pain protective factors and pain provocating factors. Okay, and um, meditation has powerful medicinal effect for our body, and I'm going to talk about it later. Self-regulation and hobbies, and adequate sleep, and optimal activity levels, and positive relationships. Since pain is not visible, many people have problems with that area. You know, they go to work, their boss tell them to do things, and they are having a lot of pain, but pain is not visible, and they feel like, how come they don't understand this pain? So that's a horrible sensation. If you have a close friend or a family member who care about you, then you should just uh, utilize them to cope with your chronic pain together. They can actively join your pain management, participate. So the plan participation, they can come to your appointment with you, and also they can talk about food, they can talk about pacing the activity, yeah? And then um, post, uh, no smoking, of course, no alcohol use. And um, alcohol, there are some choice of the alcohol, such as red wine, they have some polyphenols. So therefore, it's a little bit preferable list of the alcohol over other drinks. If you're suffering from conditions like migraine headache, then that's not a good choice because it's aged, older food. Therefore, it provocates your migraine headache. And uh, uh, avoidance of the polypharmacy. When I showed you the nerve irritation picture earlier, I mentioned about glia activation happened and neurons get irritated. Painkillers like opioid, when you're using for a chronic use, like long time on regular basis, and it activate glia cells. That's the reason why opioid use, like a strong narcotic painkiller use in the setting of non-cancer pain, we want to be careful, okay? So the bottom line is, yeah, there's no magic pill, and you just need to work to get the risk factor to change it to protective factor. So actually, when the initial injury happened and when people develop chronic pain, they have things that was on the left side of the slide earlier, the risk factor, multiple risk factors simultaneously happen, and your, their body get overwhelmed. So then we talk about our dangers. When your friend or family people, we look at these plate too often, you know, when people gather around the food, and then uh, when you see those plate, you got to tell them that you got to do it right. And uh, I have a... Uh, oh, my music doesn't start. I was going to sing a song along with this, but I'll sing my song later, okay? So that's dangerous. And then uh, the true care, the cure for the chronic pain, you may not be able to eliminate 100% of the pain, but you can change your life to the level that it's manageable, you still enjoy, and you have fun then you need to look at the whole health. So what are whole health? Is some result, some, some of your genetics, your environment, and your self-care, and professional care, and emotional care. So many times, too often, uh, patients go see doctors, and then the doctors and their team only provide professional care, and they only discuss this passively receiving professional care alone, and both of them get frustrated because they're not getting better. 
because they're not utilizing genetics, environment, self-care, and emotional care. So then, you know, we just need to understand the game plan. What are the examples of the professional care? Anything that you receive from the therapist, including physical therapy, chiropractor, massage that you receive from the therapist, and um, medication injections, surgery. These are the professional care that you receive passively. And the self-cares are basically plant-based, low inflammatory diet, weight optimization, improving your sleep, improving your emotion, and improving your um, posture. You live with your posture for how many hours per day? It's so important that you uh, learn the correct posture. You, you work with the professionals, like a physical therapist, chiropractor, and they help you to correct your posture, yeah? And optimize activity, no smoking, no drinking. So there are four areas that want to be um, touched. One area is the plant-based and the inflammatory diet on the left, up, upside, and then the optimal activity, mind, body, relaxation on the left bottom, and your sleep. And when we talk about plant-based and the inflammatory diet, people often ask me, what about protein? Then what do we say? Let me show you what American Heart Association says. You don't need to eat foods from animals to have enough proteins in your diet. Plant proteins alone can provide enough of the essential and non-essential amino acid, as long as your diet is well balanced. There you go. Then how much of what you wanted to eat? This is just an example. So the one box is approximately half cup. So the green leafy veggies, abundant of it. And the broccoli family, you wanted to eat broccoli family by the way that you combine with myrosinase containing food. What is myrosinase? Myrosinase is an enzyme that is in broccoli stem and also daikon root, wasabi, mustard seed. And that myrosinase enzyme activate the precursor of nutrients called sulforaphane. That's a unique nutrient. Why it's important in the chronic pain? Because we learned about DNA switch on and off. So the cruciferous family and the allium family, basically garlic onion family, they are histone acetylators. What is this? It's a big term, but the DNA is histone. Get acetyl group attached, and it changes their uh, probability to be red. So the DNA is your blueprint. When it's red, when the switch is on, what's written on the DNA get executed, yeah? And other vegetable, purple, orange, yellow, you wanted to eat rainbow colors because all the colors of the vegetables are new nutrients are different nutrients. So anthocyanin, the purple, or orange, and yellow, the beta carotenes, yeah? And herbs and spices, be abundant. Any opportunity that you use, you wanted to use it. Ginger, turmeric, make sure that you combine turmeric with, with black pepper, and it boosts the bioavailability of turmeric by 2,000 times by peppering in the black pepper. And um, also, um, um, rosemary bay leaf, those Italian herbs are very powerful, and Ceylon cinnamon. Very important that you buy Ceylon cinnamon. There are three major different types of the cinnamons. Ceylon cinnamon, that's the, what's called true cinnamon, and Saigon cinnamon, and Chinese cinnamon. So the Ceylon cinnamon is the most purest cinnamon. If Saigon cinnamon, uh, Chinese cinnamon, they have more Coumarin. What is the coumarin? It's like a blood thinner, uh, that you th thinning effect uh, chemical, and uh, people use that in the rat killer. So you don't want to have too much coumarin in your cinnamon. So you wanted to make sure you buy Ceylon cinnamon, yeah? And uh, ginger, I put dried or roasted. Why? Because when you heat the ginger, you activate more 6-shogao. 6-shogao is one of the key nutrients in the ginger. So when you just sun-dry the ginger, the 6-shogao activation happens like 2 to 3%. But when you heat it with a roasting, with a higher temperature, it activates about 12%, which is three or four times more. 
okay? And the uh, garlic family, mushrooms so important too. Maitake, shiitake, enoki are the three culinary edible immune boosting uh, mushrooms, okay? And oh, and I put like one box, but the lower three like herbs, allium, what I mean is just eat some every day. And like mushroom, maybe even one piece, but or the quarter cup, something like that. The garlic, two cloves a day. Turmeric, about 1.5 to 3 grams per day of the uh, turmeric root, yeah? So I mentioned daikon as a myrosinase containing vegetable that activate the broccoli's nutrients. So daikon looks like this. You know, I grew up in Japan, so I'm familiar with this, but just in case you don't know, this is daikon, and actually daikon are quite photogenic. So some sexy ones, cute ones, and funny ones. <laughs> okay, woohoo! So, <laughs> and how do you enjoy it? This picture is namasu. Actually, it looks like a, a little bit hazy picture, but it's a carrot and daikon, and it, you just marinate it. And uh, in the regular recipe, uh, many people use sugar, but refined sugar is one known uh, inflammation causing food. So let's try avoiding. If you can zero down refined sugar, that's the best. Then what do you use to sweeten? You can use mirin, that's a fermented um, alcohol-like thing, but it's a little bit sweeter. You can buy it at the health store or the oriental store. And you can also use urethritol. Urethritol is a naturally occurring rare form of the sugar that doesn't raise the sugar level too much. And also it doesn't get absorbed in the body, it doesn't get altered, so it's much, much safer, okay? And uh, when we just slice raw daikon and put it on top of the broccoli, then if you even overcook the broccoli, when you mix with the raw myrosinase, it's as good as eating raw, okay? And daikon leaves do not throw it away. You can uh, finely chop and you can stir fry with the scant oil and maybe put a little bit sesame and salt in this delicious or you can put it in soup like miso soup. And if you buy organic and uh, this is the daikon flour that I just took home from farmer's market this weekend and you can enjoy organic flour because many, too many flowers, they use lots of pesticide. So, but this is one way to enjoy that, okay? So let's talk about how to enjoy your broccoli in the correct way. So the, on the left side, I mentioned about vegan wasabi Caesar dressing. So the putting wasabi actually add myrosinase. And also the, if you eat cooked broccoli, like lightly steamed broccoli, you like that creamy dip, like creamy rich dressing that goes well with the broccoli, it's so delicious. So you can use rosy garlic, cashew nuts, salt, and uh, organic lemon with a little bit skin, raw onion, nutrient yeast, Dijon mustard, wasabi powder, and salt and pepper. And you know, you, you put, I forgot to put vinegar. You can put apple cider vinegar or some form of vinegar. Then you spin it with the bullet blender. And it's so creamy and you cannot believe that there's no dairy. And uh, the, on the bright side, basically you just make green smoothie and let's put the broccoli and broccoli stem or the broccoli sprout. And you can put, of course, the seeds, you know, flaxseed, chia seed. And if you wanted to put some fruits, you could put mango, berries, and bananas. But do not put apples in a smoothie because apples, fructose, that's the fruit sugar, get easily detachable and it creates free fructose that cause the blood sugar raise, okay? And um, let's talk about pesticide exposure. So in my previous one, I put organic for the green veggies and also very, you want it to be organic. What is this? So the environmental working group, every year they update the Dirty Dozen Plus and Clean 15. And um, this 2017 version they just announced. So you can go to ewg.org and this is a great organization. And if you agree with what they're doing, if you want to support then you know, you can, um, maybe like support their act. So the dirty dozen basically are the list of the fruits and vegetable, thin skinned, directly sprayed on the leaves and fruits that you directly eat it. 
Clean 15 are thick skinned, like cabbages. They're covered with the thick leaves. And then also avocado, um, um, onion, sweet peas. So these are the ones that you don't have to buy organic. Why in the chronic pain you wanted to avoid pesticide exposure? Because pesticides are neurotoxic chemicals. When your nerve is already angry, you want it to make it easy for your nerve. You don't want to um, get exposed with additional neurotoxic chemicals, yeah? Fruits, you want it to do four servings, berries and other fruits. And you can do nuts and seed, like uh, walnuts, cashew nuts. When you eat nuts, you want it to make sure that you read the label. Raw is better, but when it's roasted with the oil, you know, uh, oftentimes they add sunflower oil, cottonseed oil, peanut oil, and the heated oil in itself is not healthy. And also, some of the oils are more omega-6 fatty acid rich oil. And omega-6 fatty acid can create inflammation causing chemicals, yeah. And uh, beans, you want it to eat uh, two to four servings per day. If the bean eating causes too much bloating, there are ways to reduce the gas production by just the soaking the beans and the boiling without flavoring for about an hour and you discard the water, then you can eliminate the gas producing um, um, uh, fiber part in that the first boiling. Then you put the new water or the veggie broth and you start flavoring, yeah? Or you can use rinse, uh, the canned beans and you rinse well, okay? And grains, eating grains are better than eating flowers of the grain because when you flower the grain, what happens in the body is it's easily digestible. So it moves faster in your stomach system, then faster sugar surge happens. So because of that, let's stick with grains and visible grains. And any of you, everybody like eating rice? Yeah? But, so then, do you eat white rice or brown rice? Okay. Have you tried black rice? Yeah? Black rice is super, super healthy. And also, it's a species of sweet, sticky rice. So the glycemic index of refined sugar is about 96. What is glycemic index? Basically, the food's ability to surge the sugar level. So higher, the more dangerous, yeah? So the white rice is 89. It's similar to licking sugar. And uh, brown rice is 60. It's just marginally okay. 60 or less is kind of acceptably low inflammatory food. And, but black rice is 42. It's really good. And it's a sticky rice species. So you just need to add maybe 20 to 25% more water, and you may want it to soak overnight. Depending on your uh, rice cooker or the pressure cooker's pressure capability, it might take longer or shorter, but if the rice comes out crunchy, that means you didn't add enough water, okay? And uh, uh, sweet potato, th those um, starchy vegetables you also wanted to eat, yeah? Starchy vegetable, when you boil it and when you cool it, the percentage of the resistant starch increases. What is resistant starch? It's basically the starch that is resistant to digestion. Therefore, it goes to intestine and feed your microbiomes in the intestine. So you want it to feed your microbiomes and keep them happy, then what happened? The microbiomes fermentate those fibers and create short chain fatty acid that works to calm down your inflammation, okay? So green smoothie for breakfast, you could do that. It's a great way to increase the nutrients accessibility, such as folic acid, lutein, and you can use like organic kale, spinach, broccoli, broccoli sprouts, broccoli stem, dried ginger, and you can sneak in small garlic. If you put some uh, banana or mango berries, you can kind of um, camouflage that garliciness. If you smell really hard, you can tell that garlic is there, but 
you can try that, especially when you're about to get catch cold. You know, you get coughed on by many people and you start to have this scratchy throat, then you need garlic on board. Then the roll is better, so you could do it that way, okay? You can do anti-angiogenesis berry. I mentioned earlier about new blood vessel formation for the arthritis, yeah? There are food that starves those new blood vessel formation, and one of them are berries. So you can put anti-angiogenetic, and you put, yeah, organic frozen berry mixes. It's cheaper than fresh ones. And you can also put, I put dried organic tangerine skin, and it gives such a refreshing, sophisticated taste, and I love it. And then that they have, a uh, chemical called herspiridine, and that is a powerful anti-inflammatory chemical so at the skin of the tangerine, yeah? And then uh, you also wanted to use dairy alternative, and when you buy dairy alternative, make sure that there's no carrageenan added. Carrageenan is a food additives. It's a thickener to thicken the dairy or the dairy alternatives, and it disrupts your microbiomes, friendly microbiomes. Then you sprinkle, of course, ceylon, cinnamon, and nutmeg. It's going to be very delicious. Okay. And I talk about some condiment. Yeah, teas. When I mention about starving new blood vessel formation, there's a powerful tea, which is a blend of green and jasmine tea, actually has synergies to double up this starving new blood vessel formation capability. And epigallocatechin chalate, is the key nutrients in the green tea. Um, you can add, squeeze a little lemon juice or lime juice to help the absorption. I love mixing lime juice with the green tea. It adds such a sophisticated taste, okay? And dark chocolate greater than 85%, about three pieces a day. Why? Because dark chocolate has nitric oxide that improves the circulation. Okay, and uh, vitamin D3, oh sorry, vitamin D3, if you don't go outside, if you don't spend outside, your body is covered with the clothing, then you want it to, uh, especially when you do a plant-based diet, not, so, not much vitamin D3 intake happens from the food, but it's a basically some vitamin, and you might want to take about 2,000 international units per day as a maintenance dose, and uh, omega-3, Omega-3 is basically an anti-inflammatory fatty acid. When you eat flaxseed oil or the plant-based oil, omega-3 oil, this is alpha-linolenic acid, and that is anti-inflammatory, but to be able to become the anti-inflammatory eicosanoid, they need to first form EPA by elongating. It's a you know, short-chain fatty acid, elongate and make um, EPA, but that reaction in the body is very, very inefficient. So the, it's more inefficient for meat eaters than the plant-based people, but still is inefficient. Then the EPA get further elongated, make it DHA. Then after DHA, finally make anti-inflammatory eicosanoid. So you want it to take preformed EPA and DHA. Eating fish is one way to get some, but FDA recommend pregnant women to consume about eight to 12 ounces of low mercury fish per week, but that dose is neither beneficial nor protective because primarily because of the widespread ocean contamination with methyl mercury and PCBs. So you wanted to get a uh, laboratory grown uh, LG de de derived uh, DHA 250 milligram per day, or the you know one to two thousand uh, milligrams of the um, omega three uh, preformed EPA and DHA from um, um, third party laboratory company verified because the purity contaminants are always an issue for the over the counter supplement. So then, if you become Vegan, you want it to do vitamin B12 two to three days a week, okay? And uh, vitamin K2 and vitamin D3 are for the muscular skeletal health. Calcium and vitamin D forms calcification, and it's vitamin K2 that takes them to the bone so that the calcification happens in the bone to strengthen the bone. 
And where can you get vitamin K2 from? So the vitamin K2 is from bacterial fermentation. So the bacterial fermentation occurs. Like, I grew up in Japan, and I eat natto. Anybody knows natto? Yeah. So natto is a slimy, smelly, fermented soybean. It's acquired taste. So one pack of the natto has about 50 microgram of vitamin K2. It's one way to consume it. In American food, it's, uh, you have a question? Oh, no? OK. In American food, it's Gouda cheese. But Gouda cheese, yeah, it's, it's dairy. So the amount of that is about um, Gouda cheese, like 3.5 oz of Gouda cheese has 75 micrograms with vitamin K2. But yeah, dairy, you, need, you know, get the impact from what? The insulin-like growth factor one. This is a factor that tells your cell to grow, grow, grow. And then uh, also, um, when you milk the cow all year round, instead of natural lactation phase, for hormonally, it's not a uh, safe practice. And also, when they hook the cow, machine with the cow and milk the uh, cow's milk with the machine and hook with the plastic tube, and that plastic tube may leach hormone disrupting chemicals. So, for that, yeah, you know, you don't want to do dairy too much. Okay? So, for example, I, this is from Dr. Joel Furman's recipe, black bean brownie is one way to eat chocolate. It's dairy-free, uh, flour-free, sugar-free. And then uh, this recipe, have you ever made this one? It's so decadent. Even before you bake, it's fudgy and so tasty. I love it. And it's basically, yeah, the canned black beans and uh, pitted majuro dates, actually to sweeten the, um, the brownie, yeah? and uh, almond butter, and vanilla, and uh, natural non-alkalized co coca powder, and uh, ground chia seed. Chia seed, when you soak, it makes gooey goo, and that works like an egg white. Okay, and uh, you just uh, blend and make it. And when you look at recipes like that, you need to um, be creative. So I was talking to uh, one of my patients who has migraine headache. Okay, migraine headache, you wanted to avoid chocolate. It's a trigger. But then, what is a good food for migraine headache? It's ginger. Then I made this recipe. I experimented in my kitchen. Yeah, let's use chickpea instead of the uh, black bean. And I used ginger instead of the cacao powder and made the ginger bar. It's like a ginger snaps made of chickpea, flour-free, sugar-free, and it was so delicious. So you just find one recipe, and you just think, hey, can I cater it to other occasion? Then you can create another recipe, okay? So now let's take a little look at activity. So you wanted to do myofascial release. What are these? So fascia is loose connective tissue that is like a skin under the skin. So you have another like a loose connective tissue, one sheet skin under your skin on top of your muscle. And that fascia actually flex is flexible and it's loose and it can mold to different shape and that helps you to move. And many back pain, for example, when you have back pain, People are only interested in looking at MRI and, yeah, I have herniated this. Oh, I have this arthritis. But when we examine many patients, many people's fascia is so stagnated. It's a superficial soft tissue palpation causes too much catching. You can feel the stagnation of the fascia, and that is painful. So the most superficial layer of the pain is myofascial pain. Then what do you do? You can roll with a foam roller, or that you can use theracane, or the cupping, or gua sha massage. So there are different ways to loosen up your fascia. The amount of sit down, driving, one posture for prolonged time that we are doing in modernized living locks our fascia. So because of that, 
this is not something that you only do it for the pain, but something that you do it twice a day as a maintenance to calibrate back to zero every day, okay? And well-balanced exercise. So when you view the exercise, you want to look at four component, cardiac resistance, neuromuscular, that means your balance training, yeah? And flexibility. And also mind body in meditation. So um, I put 12 minutes um, according to the Alzheimer's dementia preventive study at UCLA who did the current Korea meditation. I'll ex explain to you about the protocol. So this is one way to do myofascial release. It's called Theracane. It's a um, uh, massage stick. And in this study, basically they use this meridian, uh, like acupuncture, chi pathway called meridian, and they put five second pressure each location five times a day. And compared with 400 milligram ibuprofen three times a day. So the baseline pain is about the same. The couple days later after the first time treatment, second time treatment, third time treatment. So the left side is a theracane group. So theracane group, the baseline pain became just lower, like 0.08. So the 5.2 becomes 0.08. And ibuprofen group lower some, but theracane group, that this low-tech uh, meridian self-massage, self-care, reduces pain that much. And when we also take a look at the pressure pain threshold, what is this? It's the threshold of pressure, the, how strong you need to press the tissue to cause the pain. So the higher, the better. Um, theracane group dramatically increased the pressure pain threshold. And also, I don't have a graph, but it improved the range of motion. So the ibuprofen group almost no benefit for the range of motion, but theragin group each direction about 10 degrees uh, increase of the range of motion, yeah? And uh, meditation, so basically it's a Kurta Kriya yogic meditation. It's a Kundalini yoga meditation. The, the randomized control trial, that means the best quality of the medical evidence, 12 minutes a day and for eight weeks. And then uh, eight weeks later, they do the blood draw and compared two groups. So the uh, study subject groups, they did a curtain Kriya yogic meditation uh, 12 minutes a day. Uh, control group actually did uh, 12 minutes a day of relaxation music listening. Then eight weeks later, so the result is amazing. Basically reduced the inflammation causing chemical, a down regulated inflammation causing genes and up regulated immune boosting gene and boosted up the uh, longevity gene activity double amount. So this is the original paper looks like this and uh, brain findings. So the increased brain circulation was observed in the meditation group. So then how do we do this? It's so easy and I'll show you how to do it. So there are five components. You breathe, natural breathing, your posture, sitting comfortably, and your eyes closed. And you do vocalization of the mantra and then the finger movement, like Indonesian dancers finger movement, we call it mudra. And then the you visualization, some unique focus of the concentration. And I'll show you with a picture. So this is vocalization of the finger, it's called satanama. And then the, it's a, Mary's got the little lambs, the first four notes. So satanama, satanama is how we do it. And there is sequence. So the visualization focus is you, you visualize a sound coming down from the top of the head and out to the mid forehead. And that's how you visualize. And the sequence is, first two minutes, sing out loud. You do, sa -ta -na -ma. And the second two minutes, whisper voice. Sa -ta -na -ma. And next four minutes, you say it silently in your brain, okay, in your head. Then go back to whisper voice and regular voice and then some quiet time and make the 12 minutes. And actually you can practice with like iTunes, there are some tracks that you can download and you can do it. Because I don't know any medicine that does this, okay? So in summary, chronic pain is 
all over the body illness. It's a disease of its own category. And it's not just focal biomechanical issue. And uh, your body's chemistry plays great roles. Whole person care is the way to go. So the lifestyle modification, nutrition, plant-based, low inflammatory diet, activity, optimal sleep, and relaxation, and your perception of the stress and emotional well-being plays big roles. And you're going to work to get better. So ideally, yeah, you know, sometimes the injection still is helpful. If you are a good candidate, you're going to discuss that with your doctor. And if you are able to work with your medical team who can collaboratively work with you to work on the rest of the area, how to do DNA changes, switch on and off, how to do the good diet, how to do the good posture with the movement team, and also how to um, improve your emotion with a, a behavior therapist. You can utilize those things and make sure that you touch all components at the same time. You don't want to do a la carte one by one. It's not going to work like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, injection didn't work. Let's try acupuncture. Oh, it didn't work. Let's try chiropractic. You, you don't do that. You want to do everything at the same time. Okay? So passive care is only one-fifth of the treatment. And self-care to change the lifestyle is the four-fifth of the treatment. And then you want it to um, have some good direction, yeah? So I hope that this you know, information I provided you serves as a good information. But what do you do? Yeah, you understand how to do it, but if you're too busy to do it, you don't have time or you don't know how to cook, then you just have to cheat. Then sometimes when I'm busy, this is what I do. I buy organic canned beans, pre-made soup, organic salsa, and I read the label. Yeah, make sure there's no BPA. Uh, in the can, because the BPA coating is a hormone disrupting chemical that frequently is used as a coating of the can. And the ingredients are very simple. There's no dangerous things added in there. Soup, salsa, and you just mix it. Then it's like $12, but me and my husband lunch is made. So, you know, busy morning you do that. You can variation, you can, you know, the alternate the taste, you could do Cuban black bean soup today, this week, and uh, three bean chilies next week. That's how you do. And then uh, I show some products, but I don't have any commercial affiliation. It's just an example. And there are other useful websites in there. And also, I wanted to mention uh, Dr. Grace Chan is uh, here in the audience, and she did my interview, How I Treat the Patient. And her website is graceinhawaii.com. So, and she has lots of YouTube videos and interviews local people, amazing stories of the recovery of the real patient. And you wanted to check out her website. Do you have any question or concern or oh, alternative to NATO? You know what? You may want to just buy the MK7. It's inexpensive. MK7, yeah, M MK7 is vitamin K2. And uh, yeah, they're good companies, like ph pharmaceutical companies that you can buy. And actually, there are products that they put both vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 with a good ratio. And uh, it, it is like a cheap. It's like, I don't have any affiliation, but now is a company and they make uh, vitamin D3 and vitamin K2. Uh, I think it was like 1,000 nutrition units and uh, 45 microgram vitamin K2 and one, one uh, actually 120 capsule is like $7. Maybe, yeah, that, that's one way to do. Yeah. Hmm? A food? I only know good cheese. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's from bacteria, from the, but in a way though, if your uh, microbiome is in a really good shape, then you can form some in your body. But yeah, yes. Kombucha, very good. And actually, yeah, the kombucha, yeah, you can drink kombucha. It's a little sweet, but it has, a, it is a probiotic food. You make your own. Any other questions? 
Oh, kombucha? I don't know. Yeah, because it's sweet, you don't want to do like four cups a day or that maybe s small one cup a day. That's what I would say. But I, I, that's what my guess is and what I will do for me. Any other questions? Okay. So, you know what? Let me just uh, find my music and I look at your plate and I could see you love the dangerous food. You're not trusting your heart and how to eat. You told me you're gonna make a change and then plan before you start. I'll be by your side and guide your way. If it's this good, it's hard to say no. But don't be afraid to go all the way. To the vegan, to the vegetarian way. For the chance to heal yourself, I gladly say it again. To the vegan, to the vegetarian way. For the chance to heal yourself, I gladly ask it all. We've been to the worst vegetarian way. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, that was my uh, diva moment. <laughs> if you want, I can sing one more song. Maybe when you're putting your chairs. Okay. Whew. You know, got to be real. That's my jam. What you eating? What you cooking? What you putting in your mouth? Gotta be real. What you grinding? Flex seed. What you juicing? Broccoli. What you peeling? God. Super food, super healthy. Ooh, if your food is real now, you know the high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity will go away. Hey, what do you? What you put in, in your mouth's got to be real. It's got to be real. Ooh, cause my food is real now. You know it's anti-aging, anti-wrinkle. That's why I look like 20 years old. But you What you cooking? What you putting in your mouth? Gotta be real. It's got to be real. To be real. It's got to be real. Got to be real. It's got to be real food. Got to be real. It's got to be real food. Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. You gotta eat the real food. Da -da 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 <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. You guys drive safe. Okay, I'll see you next time. And you can check out my music, mickeypurnell.com. I have my first album, uh, debut album 2013. Thank you.
Dr. Mickey Purnell for a really great talk and for your lovely singing as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Have a safe drive home. Thank you again for coming. Mahalo, everyone. Good night. The next song is a special, special song. Any of you guys do a veggie cleanse? Like a detox, beauty cleanse? Cleansing for the beauty is very, very effective. Therapeutic fasting, we have good researches, University of Southern California, and my husband and I, we do it sometimes. But we wanted to do it is in a beauty princess way. So I have a great um, jazz mentor in Los Angeles. His name is Tamia Handelman, and he's a pianist of Barbara Streisand. He's a big time world class. So I took his lessons, and I was working with this arrangement and songs, and his daughters got inspired to write these lyrics. It's beautiful. You, you will know that song. It's a princess song. Veggies are your friends For the beauty cleanse Veggies often rhyme Like carrots and key lime They always make me smile Pickles and zucchini, hummus and tahini. The table is all set, you ain't see it yet. Beauty and the feast, always a surprise, always a Rhubarb and sweet peas, lemon and green beans. Oh, it's such a sight. The table is all set. You ain't seen nothing yet. Taste it with your eyes. Feel the sweet surprise. Beauty and the feast. Have you ever baked black bean brownies? The table is all set, vegan chocolate, beauty and the feast. The table is all set, your charm will be reset. Beauty and the feast. Beauty and the feast. Thank you so much. <laughs>